Thrawn here, and I'm back with the Medieval Shop 13th Century Riding Sword. And if you notice, there's something different about uh, Roland Warzeka when you saw the other video where I tested out the uh, Crooked Hat Pummel or the 13th Century Unusually Shaped Pummel. It's much like an old Gillings Pummel. pummel. And he sent us some uh, pictures of that as well. Uh, it had too long of a hilt. Seriously. Most people nowadays expect you, uh, companies that make the swords, expect you to be wearing a gauntlet. Uh, you it's just used for cutting for some reason. Or they expect people to have really large hands or use them like later century swords, I assume. But earlier century swords around this time period, as we've shown in multiple videos, we totally agree with Roland Morzak, are used in the cast blow, which means you don't have to have a big hilt. Uh, you can have a very short uh, hilt, and in its use, it's cast. The cast blow, the blade is cast out from the hand. I mean, you just literally throw the blade out, let the blade do the work. You don't have to step with the cuts. It can be used from behind shields easily that way without having to step out from behind your cover in the actual shield if you're parrying or if you're in a position of, of defense. But, Bola Morzeka has proposed that with the uh, Crooked Hat Pummel, or this 13th century style pummel that only showed up for a short period of time, that you had control using a hand and a half. Because you will see drawings where people seem to be doing their hands this way on a tight pummel to maybe use it two-handed, uh, grabbing maybe the, uh, the the whole back of a disc pummel or something. But on this one, it gives you an ergonomic grip. I mean, it's actually more control than you would expect. So what we're gonna test out today, because he wanted this shorter grip, and what I've done is modified it with a shorter grip and got rid of the uh, spiral. It had a rounded handle that was spiral, I've gone to a more traditional flat oval, so you can tell the edge is much easier, and it's very, very tight. So if his theory is sound, I should be able to grip it, even with this tighter grip, in either this manner or this manner, and use it. And this is a very tight handle, so I might even try this out. But uh, we want to go ahead and test that today for Roland, uh, collaborate with him here, and uh, do a little bit further testing on his uh, theories and see how sound they are. Uh, so far, it seems to be, from our other video, uh, very impressive. We were able to chop into a head even with a longer handle, which probably gave us a little more cranking ability than we would have had with the shorter handle, but it still performed excellently. And as promised, we're back today with our uh, rolled wet newspaper tatami, uh, poor man's tatami, and we're going to see how it performs. Let's get started. All right, with a new modified handle, uh, I should start off with a cast blow because with a really sharp grip, which I went extremely sharp, as sharp as they come, uh, historically from this time period, uh, with the uh, crooked hat pummel, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to go ahead and do a cast blow, and we'll see how well that cuts. It was beautiful. All I did is cast the blade out, and we've got a beautiful, cut. Just a hair of tearing, but that can't be avoided a lot of times. Even though this is a really thin blade, it's still beautiful the way it cut through that. Cast bolt, blow work beautifully. And all everybody says not to cut towards this leg. It's very plausible if one was fighting with a smaller buckler or even a large uh, heater shield uh, at the time period that you might cut in this manner. beautiful cut and I cast it out I didn't have to step and there's a little tearing not much but look how beautiful that three inch roll is that was the cast blow so having it tighter like this makes that much more simple and easy to do just by using the weight of the blade especially on a 13th century blade that's slightly blade heavy like this If you look here, I did a slight step, but look how beautiful a cut, no tearing whatsoever. When I came back up, beautiful slice. So having the handle tighter like this is an advantage and it is plausible and possible. We had a decent sized tang in here. Uh, I was able to actually pin the back back on, but I did lose the, uh, the uh, uh, chrome that was put on after it was put together last time. Right, so now I'm going to try uh, the Crooked Hat Pummel as Roland Morzeka proposes, and I will be holding it this way. See how I have so much control over just holding this, and I'm going to hold the actual hit hilt, which is a very tight grip, but it should give me the ability to crank it more like a long sword. 
and cut with it the same way. So we're going to go ahead and try that same thing and see how well it cuts. Very nice. A little bit of tearing, not much, but I think that was a pretty clean cut. And it allowed me to actually break the weapon, getting a little more power and control, and slice clean through. So I think, honestly, he's on to something there. If this was a little bit larger, might need a little more handle space, not much. I would have an extreme amount of control. Let me try putting my finger up, because this does have a bit of a ricasso, and I'll come back and cut one more time and see how it goes. I think that was beautiful. That's the cleanest cut we've got so far. Beautiful. Look at the cut and how smooth it is through this three inch roll. So I might have shorted myself, so to speak, with the handle. I do like really tight handles myself uh, for cast blows. I know the sword was designed for that as well, being used one handed and a cavalry, like a horseback, as well as a, uh, as well as a, apparently a hand and a half sword. But with the Ricasso this has, it's not sharp here. If one were to do this, you would have perfect control even with this smaller uh, crooked hat pummel. So, Rollo Morzeka's proposal and how he believes it was used, I think is 100% accurate. His uh, theorem on it is, is sound. This shape, and I, you see it in the early Gilling uh, pummel, which is an earlier sword, and then you see it in the later drawings of the 13th century, I think that might have been the uh, true purpose, not just a uh, gotch hilt or something to hit with. Of course, it would work for that as well, I'm sure. Ah! And that was to see if we had the power, the extra power, from using the two-handed method and increasing the speed and the cut potential. And this one-inch rope was no match. The sword being used in that method, like Roland Warzek proposes, cuts it easily. And I know one-handed, it's possible, but it's a lot more difficult. That made it flawless and effortless. So, yes, I believe actually holding the sword in this method, because uh, I'm really tight hilt, I can use a Ricasso and put my finger up. Uh, if you have just a little bit uh, bigger pummel, because this would be much larger, or a little more space, just a hair, it would work this way fine as well, because we did cut with it this way as well. Thank you so much, uh, Roland Morzeka, for, uh, thank you so much for uh, proposing this. Like I said, it's an excellent grip, even like this, if you have a bit of a Ricasso. Uh, it works. You feel the control, just as if you're using a uh, two-handed weapon. I mean, it's, it's, it gives you a beautiful handling and recovery. So, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to come back later. We're also going to address the uh, uh, end him rightly, because uh, believe it or not, uh, Roland Warzeka has been gracious enough to send us some of his input on it and some of his ideas. Uh, and uh, we will actually uh, come back and uh, address a lot of things that people have said about that video because we enjoyed making it and it's a very popular video. Uh, be sure and tell everybody about us out there. Uh, like this video if you like it. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Be sure to tell everybody about our channel. Go by and like us on uh, Facebook. Our like page is Thranded Elgum's Well of Remembrance. Uh, we also have our closed uh, boat crew, our YouTube, our YouTube group. That's the Thane Thrand uh, YouTube boat crew, so everybody knows exactly what the group is about. We'll let you in if you uh, ask us to join us. Uh, if you have trouble, just look either uh, Thrand Godfrey up or Elgrim, and you'll find us online. Uh, if you'd like to make a donation, you could donate to us through Patreon, www.patreon slash thrand.com. Uh, or you can go to, uh, if you'd like to do a one-time donation, you could go to PayPal and use the Thane Thrand uh, at yahoo.com, which is also an email address and the ID there. So I hope you all have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much, Roland Morzeka. We love you. You're a great scholar and a great man. And uh, Barbell.